Good afternoon to all American football fans from the frequencies of uh, FIDAF TV. Uh, my name is Francesco Porcello and once again I will be your announcer for uh, this afternoon's game. You're looking live at Capro Arcoveggio Stadium in Bologna where in half hour we will kick off the third place match of the 2019 European Under-19 Championships between the home side Denmark and the visitors France. Earlier today, in the two matches uh, played at uh, Lunetta Gamberini Stadium, Italy beat Norway 37-20 to in the seventh place game, and Finland won uh, a thrilling game over Spain 13-9 to to capture fifth place. Tonight at 9 p.m. here in, on this field, the main event will be the championship game between Austria and Sweden. My partner in the broadcast booth for this afternoon's game is my friend Dario Grippa. Good afternoon. Denmark started their tournament with a good win over Italy and gave us the impression that they could uh, really give Austria a run for the money in the semi-finals. As we all saw, it wasn't the case as Austria easily handled the Danish team with a sound 45-6 victory. Their opponent in today's match is France. The French team shook off some early butterflies against Finland in their opening match and came on strong with 30 unanswered points in the second half. The semi-final between France and Sweden was a hard-fought defensive battle, with Sweden eventually emerging victorious 7 to nothing and relegating France to the third-place match. Dario, what should we expect from today's game? This afternoon we are going to watch two very similar teams. Team Denmark has shown a tendency to rely on the running game, with a great committee of three running backs, very complementary between them. On the other side, their pass offense is good for just seventh place after two games. They'll face the second best total defense that has, that has allowed only 46 yards per game with an average of two yards per carry. So they will need their best effort to run against the French team. Looking at their respective counterparts, the French offense is also built to run with almost five yards per carry, second only to Austria. The Danish rush defense had a hard time on Thursday stopping the Austrians running game, but we know that the defending champions are very good at that. Let's get ready for some good old smash mouth football. Thank you, Dario, and uh, I'd like to say hello to our men from the field uh, that will uh, deliver our pre-game interviews. Good afternoon to Manfredi Leone. Good afternoon, friends and colleagues. Uh, we are here in Arcoveggio Field uh, after covering a long morning with the other two finals, uh, yet played a seventh and uh, fifth place. Here I am with uh, Coach uh, Emmanuel Maguire from Team France. Thank you, Coach, for being with us. Good luck, good afternoon. So you are facing Denmark now. We arrive with uh, this game with a 500 yards total offense in two games played. Uh, tough games, close games, interesting championship indeed. Uh, is going to be penalties for your team something that you have to change? Because we, we saw last one was a little bit affected by that. Yeah, definitely. That's something we talk about uh, the last two days. Now we got to be more, uh, more focused, more disciplined uh, to make sure we, we, we get uh, out of Italy with a bronze medal. What do you expect from Team Denmark today? They are physical for sure. It's been the third Nordic team we play in, in a week. So I think that will be the same with Sweden and, uh, and, and Finland. They are tough, athletic, they hate hard. Uh, we, just have, we just have to answer. They prefer to run more than pass the ball. So what about your defense? Yeah, they, they like to run the ball, so we got to stop them and make sure they, if they want to beat us, they got to they gotta throw the ball. Okay, coach, thank you very much for the, your third Nordic team in one week and good luck for the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Here we had uh, Coach Maguire from Team France. I release you the line uh, for a couple of minutes and uh, I will ask uh, Coach Lars Carlsen to come to me. Thank you, Manfredi. Let's uh, take a few moments to look at... Uh, uh, the two players that we chose, Dario, as the players to watch for today's game. For the home side of uh, Denmark, we chose the second uh, running back in two games. Uh, uh, as we already mentioned, uh, Denmark has a very strong, powerful running game. Our choice uh, uh, today fell for number 24, uh, August Lillie, a running back of 17 years, a meter and 89 uh, for 100 kilos for this very unorthodox uh, north-south runner from the Copenhagen Towers. In the first two games, August uh, has totaled uh, 108 rushing yards and two touchdowns. The choice uh, on the French team came on uh, 
Clément Chevalier, number 23, a defensive back of 19 years. Uh, he is uh, 1 meter and 82 per 80 kilograms from the Tetford Berry Saints. Uh, Clément Chevalier is also the kicker and punter for the French team. And his score so far on the defensive side of the ball uh, reads, as you can see, six and a half tackles and three interceptions for 111 yards. And a, one of those three interceptions, as you can see, was a pick six. Sorry, if, uh, Francesco, if I stop you one moment, but I take advantage to have Coach Lars Carlsen here with me on the 50s. Thank you to be with us, Coach. Uh, a very quick interview about the game. You approached this game with a 440 yards a total offense in two games. And uh, France is ready for you, and you're ready for France. Uh, my partners were presenting number 24, Lili, as a, one of the key players of this game. What's your comment about I think you're pretty right. Like, he's one of the guys that we have to rely on. If you're doing that for the first two games, and uh, you probably have a key role today as well, together with the offensive line. Probably like Denmark, French is a run-based offense. So it's going to be a defensive game? <laughs> it will be a defensive game. We know that. And uh, we are working on getting our passing game up and running. And this is one of our focus points that we really like to have some kind of passing game going on today. But uh, if you can't, we will run the ball as we did the two other games. We had a light win today that was affecting a bit the game of Finland uh, and Spain. Uh, now it's a bit calm, but it's going to make some pressure on you, this? No, the win, is, the, way, the win is right now is not a problem at all. We don't, that's fine, there's no problem whatsoever. Okay, coach, thank you very much. Thank you for your time and good luck for the afternoon. We will talk later in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is uh, Coach Carlson uh, talking to us at our mics before the game. So now from the field is all. Everything is ready. In a few minutes, we will kick off the ball. We will provide you more stats and more interviews after. So go ahead and uh, keep, keep the line. Thank you, Manfredi. Dario, uh, we received a very important uh, piece of information uh, today upon our arrival on the field. Uh, France uh, will not have uh, neither of... Uh, uh, the starting and backup quarterback available today. Both uh, Leo Cremad and Matteo Colombe are uh, injured uh, and uh, coach Maguet has decided not to risk uh, either player. So we will see uh, at the helm of the French offense, number eight, uh, Maceo Berd, uh, 19 years from the Pesa Kangaroos. Do you think this will uh, affect the ratio, uh, pass to run ratio of the French offense or do you think that they will try and uh, stay with their standard uh, 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 playbook? Francesco, my first guess is that uh, that will change um, quite nothing uh, for Team France. Uh, after two games, uh, they are just passing uh, for 85 yards with a 4.0 average. Um, they deadly last uh, as a pass offense in this tournament, so probably they will stay put on uh, their plan to rely on the running game. Uh, basically, we cannot know how good the, this guy, this new guy, could be at throwing the ball because we have him listed as a defensive back, but usually you know that uh, uh, mostly on uh, the junior teams uh, it's quite common to play double platoon football. So probably he has some experience uh, at uh, playing quarterback. Uh, not, he's not uh, probably just a defensive back. So probably we will see the same, uh, ga the same time of type of play France has shown in the first two games. I agree, I agree, although I imagine that from a nerve, uh, nerve standpoint uh, and from a concentration standpoint, probably for a third uh, string quarterback, uh, a third place medal game is not the best uh, <laughs> uh, time to start your quarterbacking career, but we will see, we will see if uh, uh, it's possible that Maceo will, uh, will rise to the occasion and deliver uh, a good game uh, for uh, the French national team. Meanwhile, I ask our uh, broadcast crew to uh, bring up the uh, nation's uh, resumes for both uh, Denmark and France. First, the home side, Denmark. Uh, already eight times present in the final uh, phase of the under-19 European Championships. Their best placement uh, was the second place in the 2017 uh, New York, uh, uh, IFAB New York uh, edition of the uh, European tournament. Uh, the first game ever played by the under-19 Danish team was a loss by one point in Berlin 
on 4th of August 1994, while their last uh, uh, game was the loss in the Scandinavian, uh, in the Nordic Games uh, uh, against uh, Norway, 35 to 12, on the 21st of October 2018. Meanwhile, uh, the visiting team, France, 11 times uh, present uh, the French team. They have already won uh, twice the under-19 Euros in 2004 and 2006. Uh, they have played their first game uh, beating Great Britain 7-6 in Toulon uh, on the 1st of September 1992. And uh, their last game, of course, uh, uh, they lost the championship game uh, of the uh, European uh, uh, championships played uh, in, uh, in Denmark, IFAF Paris, uh, uh, that was played in Vilpint on the 16th of July 2017 by the score of 17 to 7 to, uh, uh, to Austria. So Dario, I imagine that uh, the French would have really liked uh, to meet uh, Austria again because uh, it would have meant that we would have had uh, for two European championships in a row the same uh, final game. It was not the case as the, as the Swedish defense we have already mentioned really put the clamps uh, on the French uh, offensive game and was able to shut out France uh, uh, one touchdown uh, to nothing uh, in their semi-final game. Yeah, France uh, came very close to playing another final uh, uh, again against uh, Team Austria, but uh, uh, Team Sweden has shown uh, another great defense uh, and just a little bit more great than, uh, than them. Uh, they've played uh, a very nice game. They played uh, their football, uh, their smash mouth football. Uh, uh, they came very close, but uh, as we know, in a so close game, uh, it's just a question of uh, details. Uh, and uh, we can say that uh, one of the two best teams uh, go in the final. So they they very shown to be at the same level. Uh, and uh, just some episodes uh, made one team uh, making the final for the first place and the other one playing this one for the third. I agree. And uh, having seen... Uh uh, Denmark uh, uh, play twice uh, here in Arcoveggio. Uh, I think that it will be a very hard-fought uh, game today. Uh, perhaps uh, France uh, is, uh, is to be preferred from a defensive standpoint, while uh, probably the Danish uh, runnish, uh, running game uh, has really shown us something extra. Meanwhile, as we uh, wait for, in, for the introduction of our uh, crews today, uh, and also, of course, uh, of the starting lineups. Let's take a quick look uh, at the coaching staffs of the two teams. For Denmark, coach Lars Carlsen, it's also head of mission. The offensive coordinator is Daniel Lassen. Thomas Kipp is the defensive coordinator, and Simon Sonesen takes care of the special teams. Morten Ramsgaard coaches the quarterbacks. Nikolai Kesseler, the halfbacks. Adrian Teague, the running backs. Steven McCasker is the offensive line coach. Torben Bodilsen, the defensive line coach. Simon Rasmussen is the linebacker coach. Asger Brostrom and Lau Hartoft take care of the defensive backs. And Jan Skjorbeik is the team manager. With regard to France, Emmanuel Meguet is the head coach. Steve Gersant is the offensive coordinator. Jean-Baptiste Gassier, the defensive coordinator. Quentin Danes, offensive lines. Laurent Marcelin, running backs. Ryan Joanno, wide receivers. Thomas Chakarian, defensive line, Theo Servan, linebackers, and Johan de Brabant, defensive backs. Olivier Moret is the head of the French mission. Meanwhile, let's uh, introduce today's uh, uh, refereeing crew for the bronze game. Today, the referee is Mr. Veiko Laminsalo. The umpire is Olivier Caldes. The center judge is Christian Horgensen. Linesman is Magnus Magnusson. Line judge, Riccardo Zampedri. Field judge, Michael Kren. Side judge, Matthias Kalgenner. And back judge, Stefan Lascour.
as the refereeing crew it's also uh, being introduced here at the stadium and while we wait uh, to point our cameras to the field entrance uh, to watch the starting lineups uh, Dario a little update on the statistics Francesco, we were talking about uh, the French defense. French defense is a second this tournament, uh, only behind uh, the Austrian one. In two games, uh, they allowed just 301 yards, good for the second place, as we, as we mentioned, uh, in the tournament, with just uh, an, uh, an average of 150.5 yards a game and an average of 2.8. So a great defense uh, that will uh, test uh, in a very hard way, the Danish offense. The Danish offense is in this tournament just the number six after two games with a 222 yards uh, average for game. In the last game against uh, the, the number one defense, uh, the Austrian one, we have seen uh, uh, the Danish offense in a very hard uh, uh, di difficulty. Uh, is very, it was very hard to run the ball, it was quite impossible to throw the ball. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, on the left side of the field, if we can get our cameras uh, to have a look, uh, we have the entrance of the French team. As you heard uh, from the lights, live voice of the stadium, uh, our graphics did not have uh, the starting quarterback that will be number eight, Maceo Berg, once again for the French team due to uh, physical problems to the other two quarterbacks uh, not available for Coach McGill. And here is the entry of the home team, Team Denmark. Yeah! <laughs> 
you have uh, we we are just uh, completing with the entrance of the Danish coaching staff uh, the presentation of the two teams of this third place game uh, now the Danish team will line up uh, to the left of your uh, TV screens uh, and then we will go to the national anthems uh, of the two teams then we will have the coin toss in the beginning of this bronze match between Denmark and France And now, as uh, most of the preliminaries have been completed, uh, we are only a coin toss uh, away from the beginning of this uh, third place match. Let's uh, uh, remind our friends home once again that uh, Italy came out a winner over Norway in the seventh place game uh, 
37 to 20 this morning uh, and immediately after that uh, it was uh, Finland uh, chasing uh, Spain for the entire game uh, and passing it uh, at the very end for a very thrilling nail-biter 39 uh, two very good games uh, a high scoring game uh, the affair between Italy and Norway and uh, one of those uh, typical football games that uh, you have to uh, remain on the couch and watch until the last play, the match uh, uh, between uh, the fifth place match uh, between uh, Spain and Finland. Let's hope, uh, Dario, that uh, today's game will also be an exciting one. I'm sure that will be, Francesco. Mm, I don't bags. expect uh, really... And here's the coin. You can call U19 here or the player. What is your call? Player called. It's U19, the Team Denmark has wanted toss. You want to receive. What end do you want to defend? Okay, let's go that way. Team Denmark will receive the ball. Have a good game. So Denmark has won the coin toss and Coach Carlsen has decided that he wants to see his offense on the field uh, immediately. Dario, finishing your thought. Yeah, I will say that uh, I expect a very close game, a very nice game, enjoyable, but I'm not sure that will be a nice scoring game. Uh, we have the, a very, two very good rushing, uh, rushing defenses against two very good rushing offenses, so probably the game will be not so long on the clock. They will spend a lot of time running the ball on the ground. Uh, probably there will be a close game, but not so high scoring. 33 degrees uh, is the field uh, temperature with a humidity of uh, 34%. So hot, not extremely humid. And we are only moments away from uh, kicking off uh, the bronze medal match uh, of this uh, Euro 2019. The Danish uh, return team is already on the field uh, and uh, the France kicking team uh, led by our player to watch number 23 Clément Chevalier ready to kick off. Espersen and Boos are ready to return. And here we go. The ball falls in front of David Espersen that picks it up on the 19, finds immediately the right sideline, eludes a pair of would-be tacklers, and is finally brought down by the French special team around the 35 for a first down and 10. And we will see once again Alex Schwartz, number 11, leading the Danish offense. Dario, Denmark, not a passing team. Definitely not a passing team. Their passing offense is a good just for the seven point this, in this tournament but they are really good at running so let's expect uh, probably around the 70 30 ratio for the run spread offense many motion uh, for uh, alex uh, schwartz uh, but it is uh, immediately a handoff uh, so the first play of the game is a running one extreme extremely uh, well read uh, by the french defense uh, it is our uh, player to watch, August Lillier, the ball carrier, number 24. Uh, one yard gain, second and nine. As we mentioned, is the number two rushing defense in the tournament. So the team Denmark will need uh, a lot of effort to run uh, on them. Over formation, three receivers uh, right. Once again, as it was the case on the, on the play before, Julius Bunk in motion, uh, looks to the right uh, and to number three, Victor Mazzanti, the wide receiver. The ball falls incomplete uh, imme and we will have our first third down of the game. Third down and nine uh, for the Danish offense. 
that has uh, sputtered on these first uh, two plays with a very short run uh, and an incomplete pass. Immediately, the up-tempo Danish offense uh, uh, almost uh, right away back up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, two receivers left, two receivers slide. It is uh, a handoff uh, to Lillie that uh, lost some uh, yards. Uh, and uh, the first uh, drive of the game results in a three and out for the Danish team. Great penetration by Luka Mihailovic, the defensive lineman, 19 years old. He has... Uh, Lasse Torso, number 16 uh, for Denmark, uh, uh, ready to punt. Two returners on this uh, on this punt uh, on this on this play. Gabin Le, number 83, and Elia Krame, number 16. The ball is picked up uh, by number 18 and returned. Uh, all the way to the Danish portion of the field and he's finally brought down on the 39 yard line a very good uh, return for the French team a lot of missed tackles uh, Francesco during this return uh, team Denmark uh, for sure will need to tackle better than this uh, if you want if they want to stop team France And now, finally, we will see Maceo Bird in action with the French team. Flags on the play. The, the play is stopped. Four start. Offense. Number 59, five yards penalty, still first down. After the penalty, we have a first and 15 to play for Team France. So his many motion is an end around by number 30. Well contained by the Danish defense and tackled by number 37, Frederick Dalsgaard. He was Red Valkyta running the ball. Good run by the French offense and ball that goes back to the original line of scrimmage where we will be playing a second down and ten. Chop block on the offense, number 74 and 75. That's 15 yards. Penalty, repeat first down. So another play vanished by a penalty by Team France. This time it was a chop block on the line. So as we explained uh, on Thursday, one offensive lineman blocked uh, above the waist uh, and the other one, uh, the same player below the waist. So uh, it's a dangerous situation for the defender. 74 and 75, uh, the guilty players. Uh, so now it will be first down and uh, 30 for uh, the Spanish side. Once again, it is a handoff uh, and, a, and, an ex and a very good run. The ball not only goes back to the original line of scrimmage, but, it, but uh, there is even some uh, extra gain for number 26, Yanis uh, uh, Bacanti Pullen, for a gain of uh, 25 and a very manageable second down and five. So France has already showed us uh, that they are able to run against uh, the Danish defense. Meanwhile, number 81 in motion for France, David Traoré, but it is once again a handoff, this time well read uh, by the front uh, four of the Danish defense. Third down coming up, Dario. Yeah, the play before has shown a great fake on the outside uh, and the Danish defense uh, it was uh, taken uh, off, uh, off balance uh, by the, the fake. This time, uh, with no fake, uh, he, he has done, they have done a great job stopping the inside run. They are very, they, they are very good in the box.
So thank you to our friends from home uh, uh, it, for the pronunciation of uh, Yanis Polin, the, the running back. Meanwhile, on third down, uh, the runner goes nowhere, but there is a flag on the play. So let's wait uh, for the crew to give us uh, the result uh, of this penalty. Definitely not a first down for France on this third down play. Offsides, defense, number 65. Five yard penalty, first down. Matt Sidin, the guilty party, and he is really guilty, Dario, as he gives a free first down uh, to the French offense that now has a very good uh, field uh, position on the 29 yard line, first and 10. Once again, Paul in the ball carrier, once again, uh, after an initial. Uh, gain of approximately two yards uh, he's met by the Danish defense uh, second down uh, coming up let's see what uh, the mark is one yard actually so it's a uh, second and nine team France uh, wants to explore uh, how can they run in the on the inside inside the hash mark uh, and they want to set uh, some play on the outside uh, making Danish defense to stay very close Maceo Baird uh, under center for the second down and nine motion and once again uh, Paulin is the ball carrier I this time uh, a little bit more uh, difficult for the Danish uh, defense to bring him down second effort uh, for the French runner that comes uh, close uh, to a, the first down marker it will be third and short third down and only one yard uh, for the French team that will spot this ball uh, from the red zone because the ball is uh, halfway between the 19 and the 20 yard line. Paulin uh, still in the French backfield and uh, again uh, Traore in motion. And there is a fumble and it is recovered by the Danish team. I don't see flags, Dario. First turnover of the game, and uh, the ball belongs to Denmark. Yeah, uh, bad handling by the running back. Uh, let's see the, the end of, uh, and he haven't had uh, the pox process of the ball uh, in, the, in this action. Uh, it was a good run. It looked like uh, there were a lot of uh, room for running the ball inside. But uh, this very bad handling of the ball uh, makes another uh, first down for Team Denmark. First and 10, uh, 6.36 to play in the first quarter for the Danish team. Still no score here in Arcovejo. It's a pass on the left side for number 84 of Denmark, Julius Bunk, that takes the ball towards the near sideline for a gain of uh, almost 17 yards and a first down for the Danish team that as it is uh, now, we are used to seeing, they are immediately back on the line of scrimmage. This time it is a handoff to number 31, Manus Norgard. He explores the right side, but it is met for only a short gain by the French defense. Only one yard, second down and nine. Back to pass again, Alex Schwarz. He finds his receiver, Victor Mazzanti. And uh, I believe that it, with his uh, initial effort, uh, he had uh, first down uh, yardage. And in fact, the chains are moving. Uh, again, uh, first down uh, for Denmark. Uh, both teams uh, moving the ball well, but uh, just not being able to put uh, points on the board, Dario. Francesco, Denmark uh, wants to exploit uh, the pass defense of France, which is the And here the is area. again a pass, uh, incomplete, Bunk, the intended receiver, Dario. The, the pass defense uh, is the area of the French defense, which is more exploitable. So the game plan probably will, uh, will rely on checking it uh, and try to move, move the change 
on the air. Second and ten for Denmark. Ball on the 48-yard line. Two receivers left, uh, two receivers right uh, for Schwartz. Uh, he goes back to pass. The pass is tipped up in the air and intercepted by number 23, Clement Chevalier. Dario, once again, we are rewarded for our choice uh, of player to watch as uh, Chevalier brings home uh, the fourth, his fourth interception of the tournament. Uh, uh, very, very easy, let's say, interception because as we see here in the replay, the, uh, no, this is not the replay of the interception. The ball was tipped up in the air in volleyball style, and it was not an overly difficult uh, interception. But it is the fourth time that Chevalier picks off the opposing quarterback, and it is now a first down and 10 from the 36-yard line for the French offense. Chevalier is a ball hawk. Uh, he's really hungry for the ball. This time, probably the less difficult interception for him of the tournament. And another fumble uh, by the French team. I think that uh, Baird was able to recover the ball himself. Uh, two flags on the play. So let's wait for the call from the refs. Full start. Illegal snap. Offense number 75. Five yard penalty. Still first down. The penalty is enforced uh, five yards uh, against uh, the French offense that will now uh, move back and play a first down and 15. Still, Yanis uh, Polin, uh, the feature back for the French offense. And still, uh, David Traoré, the man in motion. The ball is on the ground again. And I believe Traoré himself uh, recovered the fumble. So. A little bit of difficulty in this uh, initial phase of the match uh, for the French team, Dario. They have put the ball on the ground uh, an alarming number of times. The Danish defensive line is uh, making a lot of pressure. They, they want to play aggressive. They want to uh, make uh, things uh, very hard for the center. They want to uh, try to anticipate the snap uh, and moving at the very beginning of the ball's movement. So very hard for the center to to snap in a legal way. Let's not forget also that uh, the quarterback is probably taking his uh, first snaps in a game, uh, at least uh, in this tournament. Meanwhile... Uh, Time out. Team France. France uh, almost ran the time clock down to zero and therefore called timeout uh, before uh, receiving a delay of game penalty. Here is the, no, uh, I thought it was the replay of the interception. I think this is the play before the interception. Four thirty-six to play in this first quarter and uh, at least for these first uh, eight minutes, as uh, you had, as your forecast uh, uh, stands correct, uh, so far uh, no scoring in, uh, in this game. Uh, even though uh, both teams have been uh, uh, moving the ball well, France more uh, running and uh, Denmark more passing. Once again, second and uh, 15 uh, for uh, this time, uh, sorry, second and 14 for France. Uh, this time the handoff is to number 30, Red Valkeita, that takes the right sideline. It gains the first down, is still up on the, on the 40, on the 35, and then he's finally driven out of bounds uh, by David Tawake, number one, but not before uh, a gain of over 25 yards on this run and a first down for France. Francesco team France uh, was uh, running the ball inside the hash mark to prepare this kind of play. They are very dangerous, uh, reverting the field with this, uh, some kind of end around by the H-backs. Very good run by uh, Keita in a first down uh, for France on the 35-yard line. The handoff is once again to Keita, this time uh, looking for some space uh, on the left sideline. Again, Tawake leading the charge together with David Elkvist uh, on the tackle for Denmark. Uh, there is a gain 
uh, uh, of approximately four yards, but also a flag on the field. So let's wait for the call. Illegal block below the waist. Offense, number 76. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Block uh, below the waist by number 76, Iliam Tamer, the guilty party for France. And it's a big one because it's a 15 yard penalty that pushes uh, France back to the 46 yard line where they will play a first down and 25 yards to go. Number 27 uh, from France appeared to move uh, before the snap uh, without setting. Adrien Clico. Four start. Offense, number 59. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Five more yards uh, for France, Dario, that has picked up uh, 20 yards of penalty on this, uh, first, on this uh, portion uh, of their offensive drive. And with this five yards, they're pushed back into their uh, own portion of the field. Probably with a not so good passing game, it's not the smartest choice to lose so much yards by penalty. Another fumble, the ball is eventually picked up by Beard, but he can only move back a couple of steps and then encounter the Danish defense, led once again by David Tawake, already uh, man of the match uh, in, the, in these past days, one of the top uh, defensive players of this tournament. Uh, we will look at uh, Tawake's uh, statistics uh, in, a, in a few moments, uh, Dario, if possible. Second down, uh, and uh, the ball has moved back three more yards, so there is 33 yards to go until the first down for France. Audrey and Clicquot, the ball carrier for France. Uh, a good uh, gain uh, on this run uh, of uh, approximately eight yards. Third down coming up for France. Tawake had uh, eight uh, takeoffs in the previous two games, uh, but uh, outside the numbers, uh, his presen presence uh, in this defense is, uh, uh, is very important. He's uh, on every play. He's uh, some sort of quarterback of the defense. Uh, he's uh, one of the more experienced players in this roster. Third down, 21 yards to go for France to gain uh, a, a first down. Uh, again, uh, as always, uh, Traore in motion. The ball is a reverse uh, to number 83. Gaben Le, but the Danish defense sniffs the trick play by France uh, and uh, the ball goes back again into the French portion of the field for town and definitely a punt coming up uh, for France and for uh, Clément Chevalier, number 23. Danish defense uh, wants to be aggressive, wants to stay in the French backfield and try to uh, make things very complicated uh, in the handling of the ball for the quarterback, which we know is not really a quarterback. Magnus Boost, number 82, back to receive the punt from Denmark. He's stationed on the 10-yard line. The clock goes down to zero, and uh, there is uh, a flag thrown by the back judge. Delay of game. Offense. Number 23. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. An encouraging first drive for France, Dario, where they had moved the ball well up until the fumble. Not a not so encouraging uh, second drive uh, where a lot of limits uh, are coming up. Uh, uh, in particular, uh, uh, I don't know the exact total, but I've counted four or five penalties uh, against Team France on this drive. Once again, Chevalier ready to punt. It is a slow roller 
that will die on the 23. No return uh, for Team Denmark. First and 10 Denmark, Manfredi. Uh, just to answer your call, we, uh, we have uh, Team France, uh, five penalties and 41 yards and three fumbles. So, uh, a little... Uh, a little series of problems uh, on the offensive drive for France. Uh, certainly the pressure of the Danish offense and uh, the new quarterback uh, will probably stabilize uh, his position as the game uh, goes on. Meanwhile, wing formation for uh, Denmark. Two receivers right, one receiver left. But it's a handoff to David Espersen. Met immediately by number 14, Jonas Pernier and Clément Chevalier. Uh, loss on the play, tackle for loss. Uh, uh, second down and 14 coming up for Denmark. Two receivers left, and it's number 84 on the left side, Julius Bunk, uh, catching the ball. It's a short pass. The gain is uh, six yards, third down and eight, coming up for Denmark. The French defense uh, is showing uh, today just a base package with seven men in the box, uh, uh, with a classical 4-3 formation, sometimes a 4-3 under, uh, under, sorry, uh, also, this time we can see a basic 4-3 uh, alignment. Receivers on the right side in bunch uh, for uh, Denmark. Uh, typical uh, twin on the left. The quarterback uh, screaming uh, to his center. A flag is up. Meanwhile, the ball is caught by number 89, Andreas Paske, the H-back. And uh, if the play should stand. It is good for a Danish first down. Let's see what the call was. It was the headlinesman throwing the flag. Offside, defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. The Danish offense is doing a great job changing the sound of the air count. It's the second time in a row that they create uh, some early movement uh, on the French defensive line. First down and 10 uh, for the Danish team. The ball is positioned uh, on the 34 yard line. Timeout on the field, I believe. And it is uh, not this a timeout, the apologies. The it's the end of the first quarter. So teams that will change their position on the field Still no score, but a good game between uh, France and Denmark. Francesco, I think that the team Denmark is doing an amazing job uh, changing his way of playing the ball. They decided not to rely on their uh, great running game. They want to explore uh, the possibility to throw the ball. And in this quarter, they show that they can do that. More methodical, uh, more, let's say, uh, or orderly, the Danish attack. Uh, the French uh, attack more uh, confused, but then when it comes up uh, uh, in a correct way, uh, some really big plays for them uh, and huge chunk of yards uh, gained uh, by their offense. Uh, lots of pressure for Alex Schwartz. Uh, there is a first, uh, he was in the grasp the first time, he was able to escape, but he was caught finally by the strong pressure of the French defense. He goes down back at the original uh, line of scrimmage. We have some stats. Second and ten uh, for Denmark. We will give you some stats immediately after this play. It is a handoff uh, for uh, Magnus Norgard. He takes the right sideline. He has a first down and more and he goes out at midfield. First down Denmark. We can, we can give you some stats from the first quarter. Total offense, France, 10 plays, 70 yards. Denmark, 11 plays, 40 yards. Quarterbacks are doing uh, 
Nothing France and uh, four on seven for Team Denmark, one interception. Once again, the handoff uh, for uh, Team Denmark. Uh, and once again, immediate uh, uh, meeting uh, with number 93 from France, Adnan uh, Rekibi. Loss of uh, two, second down and 12 coming up for Denmark. Defensively, we have uh, Alquist and Tawake with two solo and one assist. And on Team France, uh, Pernier and Triboulet with two solos. Good pass this time from uh, Alex Schwartz. The, connect the connection with number 82, Magnus Bus. It should be a gain of approximately 10 that will make uh, this a manageable third down and two from the 44-yard line. Francesco Schwarz looks uh, really more comfortable in the pocket tonight, this afternoon. I agree, he looks uh, more in control uh, of his offense and he's been able to move the ball. Let's also, let's also say that his receivers have not been uh, uh, dropping balls uh, as much <laughs> as uh, we've seen in the past games. Third and two, again Schwarz back to pass. He's pushed out of the pocket uh, from the French defense and he's also forced uh, into an errant throw looking for Julius Bunk, uh, number 84. The, the ball drops incomplete. Denmark on the 42. Let's see what Coach Carlsen wants to do, Dario. Well, I think that is uh, time to play to play the four down. It's not uh, the area to punt the ball. Uh, you, probably you, you can risk a touchback, so better to try to to make some points on the, on, uh, on the scoreboard. And in fact, uh, the offense remains uh, on the field. Uh, and uh, Alex Schwartz uh, here uh, picks up the ball, hands it off. First, second and third effort uh, for our uh, player to watch. Number 24, August Lillie. First down, Denmark. 17 years for August, 1 meter and 89, 100 kilograms from the Copenhagen Towers and he used all 100 of those kilograms to gain another first down for Team Denmark. Two receivers left, two receivers uh, right for Schwarz, first down and 10, ball on the 36 yard line. The ball is flipped to the left, again to Lillie. He looks for the left sidelines, he, and he has a very good gain of uh, six yards. Second down and four, coming up on the 31-yard line uh, for uh, Team Denmark, that now is establishing Dario a little bit uh, more uh, their running game, as they were uh, relying more on the passing uh, offense in the, in the past drive. The running game... Uh is uh, their signature <laughs> in this tournament. So they're very good at doing that. Uh, and uh, after a couple of drives uh, in which they've passed more. Uh, Here again, Schwartz uh, looks and finds Julius Boom in first down territory inside the red zone. First down and 10, uh, Denmark on the 17 yard line. Francesco, this team at Denmark can look different today. Once again, immediate, uh, immediate play for Denmark. Looking for number 14, Jonathan uh, Steinhauer. Incomplete pass, uh, second down and 10. They are doing very well in passing game. If they can find some seams between the short zone and the deep zone, they can be very effective. I think uh, Coach uh, uh, Carlsen was not very happy with the outcome of, of the match against Austria and definitely brought his team ready to play today. Second down and 10 for Denmark. Two receivers right, one receiver left, and a uh, flag comes up, and there was some movement on the Danish uh, front uh, five, I think. Four start, offense, number 40, five yard penalty, still second down. Actually, it was the left uh, side receiver, Jonathan Steinauer, uh, uh, the man guilty on the penalty. Second down and 15 yards to go. France out of the red, uh, sorry, Denmark uh, out of the red zone. Same formation, one receiver left, two receivers right, and Lillier keeping company to Alex Schwartz on his left. 
but only for protection because uh, Schwarz is putting the ball up in the air for Jonathan Steinauer. Touchdown, Denmark! And a nice throw by Schwarz, uh, a nice zip in the corner, very, very well thrown. Nice hands also by Steinauer to bring it down. And we have the first points of the game, and they're from Denmark, 6-0 Denmark. <laughs> 28, uh, Jakob Sindergaard to try the extra point. The kick, it's up. And it looks to be good. So a full touchdown now for Denmark that leads this third place game with 8.23 to go in the second quarter. 7-0 Denmark. And now let's see what the answer from uh, Coach Megui and also from Coach uh, Gerson, the offensive coordinator of the French national team, uh, will be to the Danish score. Our... Uh, large and noisy Danish crowd uh, celebrating these uh, first points uh, of the afternoon. Looking at the replay, Francesco, we can see the, the mismatch in high between the receiver and the cornerback. There are uh, approximately 19 centimeters be between them and uh, it could be a matchup uh, uh, that it could they be the case to, to explore, explore during the game. Yes. Sendergaard uh, ready to kick to the two returners for the French team that are uh, number 14 and number 16, Jonas Pernier and uh, Elijah uh, Kramé. Sondergaard, 17 years of age, defensive back by trade. It's an onside kick, but it is well read by number 84 of France, uh, Terence Manigold, a tight end of 19 years. First down and 10, Dario, and a very, very tasty field position uh, for the French offense. Francesco, in the first half, uh, when I see a four down played uh, at midfield and an onside kick uh, with uh, j uh, just one scoring game, uh, I say that Coach Cast uh, wants to be aggressive, uh, wants to win this game uh, and wants to take a French offense off the field. First and 10 for uh, France from the 43 and a, uh, 47 and a very good run. He's not stopped. He is still up. And we were wondering what the answer of the French offense uh, would be. Yanis Poulin, six points for France. Uh, immediate touchdown, immediate response from the French team. And uh, this game goes up in flames and gives us 13 points, uh, perhaps 14 in a matter of a few plays, Dario. Very good run. Let's wait for the replay. Very good uh, uh, work uh, by Poulin that uh, enters the second uh, and the third uh, level of the Danish defense that looked uh, confused on this play for the first time today. France on the scoreboard awaiting the kick. Chevalier, the ball is up. And it's good. We have once again a tie game, Dario. Probably that's why Coach Carsten wanted <laughs> to, to keep the to, offense, to keep off, the offense yes. off the field <laughs> because this offense could be very dangerous. Could hit uh, your, uh, your holes. Uh, and if you miss a tackle, you miss an assignment, you miss a gap, uh, they're, they're fast as rockets. These guys uh, are really terrible uh, on, in the open field. Ramos Vesberg number two and Lucas Bierg number 12, the two safeties uh, that were burned by uh, the speed of Yanis Poulin. And uh, just like that, uh, we have a tie game and we've, ha and we've given uh, both uh, uh, fan bases uh, the occasion to celebrate the touchdown uh, for their team. Give credit to the French offensive line. We have seen in the replay a couple of pancake blocks uh, that... Uh, Leaded the way for, uh, for the run.
The kick, the ball is up in the air and uh, it will be returned by the Danish team. It, it's number 30, David Espersen, also uh, the top running back for the Danish team uh, returning the ball. Julien Smail at the tackle and now we'll see again the Danish offense. Ball on the 25 uh, for Alex Schwarz that uh, brings the offense back. Uh, uh, formation similar to the one uh, that uh, gave uh, Denmark uh, the first uh, six points of the game with uh, Jonathan Steinhauer, Steinhauser in uh, isolation. But this time the pass goes to the H-back Andreas Paske for a good gain of six yards. Uh, second and four coming up on the 31 for the Danish team. Lucas Bach, number 80, in motion, but it is a run up the middle for the Danish team, and it is a good run as the end result is a first down for Denmark. Once again, our player to watch, August Lillie, the star on this run that gives Denmark the ball on the 37 yard lines with a first uh, with the first down for the Danish team probably a little uh, confusion on the spot the ball comes back uh, one yard uh, to the 36 uh, and it's there uh, that we will restart uh, the field operations with Denmark on the offense uh, Alex uh, Schwartz calling uh, the signals It's uh, a pass, uh, but then uh, a good coverage by the French secondary. And uh, Schwartz decides to bring the ball upfield himself. It's a good gain uh, for uh, France. Uh, six yards uh, on the run by Schwartz. Uh, second down and four coming up. And is it a complete pass uh, to hold Jonathan Steinauer? But probably is, this is not good for the first down. The spot uh, looks to be approximately one yard short, and it is. Uh, so third down and one, ball exactly on the 45 uh, yard line uh, for Denmark. Meanwhile, uh, the clock uh, keeps running. 6.13 to play in the second quarter. Uh, once again, uh, seven all is the score. We have uh, an injured uh, French player, a knee down for number 44. Mohamed Abdilali, a tight end of 19 years uh, from the La Courneuve uh, flesh. Evidently, uh, Dario not <laughs> used in a tight end uh, role on this play. Yeah, well, Roster has him listed as a tight end, but uh, he is also the starting weak side linebacker. As we mentioned before, most of these guys are used to, to play both offense defense. We have seen many, many players uh, play both sides of the balls and uh, often play them extremely well. Still third down and one uh, for Denmark. Uh, uh, blitz uh, shown by the French linebackers. A flag uh, falls uh, on the field from the line judge. Let's hear. Post start on the offense, number 75. Five yard penalty, still third down. It was a uh, best result possible uh, for uh, the French defense showing blitz. Uh, it confused uh, the Danish uh, offensive line to the point that it is now third down and six after the five yards of penalties have been marked. Not on the same page, uh, Schwarz and Steinauer. The ball falls placidly on the Danish bench, fourth down coming up uh, for Denmark. Ball on the 40 yard line on their side of the field. 
Lasse Torso ready to punt for Danish, uh, Danish team. The guy is uh, the only player we have seen in this tournament listed, listed just uh, as a special team player. Actually, this morning, uh, as I ventured myself to Lunetta Dario, I saw Finland as a kicker and a punter on their, uh, on their roster, but we have not seen, obviously, Finland here at uh, Arcoveggio. Meanwhile, the punt falls uh, directly out of bounds. Uh, it's a, a not a very good punt for him uh, as the ball uh, lands out of bounds uh, at the 41-yard line. And that's where Maceo Baird will regain control of the operations uh, as he will, uh, he will come back out on the field and lead uh, the French offense uh, in this tight third place battle between uh, France and Denmark. Seven all the score, 5.36 to play. Once again, uh, the ball is for number 26 that once again gashes through the middle of the Danish defense. This time it is not for a touchdown, but it is for a 20-yard gain. Once again, beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, uh, running by Yanis Poulin, number 26. Another amazing job by the French offensive line. They are really creating uh, highways, not holes on the line of scrimmage for this running back. On the other side, this guy, number 26, uh, Yanis Bakari Poulen, uh, is uh, very fast, very agile, uh, and very good at running the ball on the second level. Again, Poulen, this time uh, met by a swarm of uh, Danish defenders. No gain on the play for Yanis Poulen, 19 years of age, uh, a meter 76 per uh, uh, 80 kilograms from the Elancourt Templier, the club team of Yanis. Baird uh, receives the play from uh, coach Gerson on the sidelines. Second and ten for France. This time uh, the handoff is for Redval Keita that explores uh, the left uh, offensive side of the field. But as it was the case in the play before, uh, well read uh, by the Danish defense, once again expecting uh, a run and uh, a minimal gain of uh, approximately one yard uh, on the play. Third down uh, and uh, nine, third down and eight uh, coming up uh, for uh, the French side. The Danish defense, uh, after a slow start, uh, uh, are containing very well the outside runs, but uh, in the last two drives we have seen that for doing that uh, they are really a little exposing, bit exploitable uh, yes, yes. in the inside the F marks. Exposing the inside. Meanwhile, uh, the referees uh, stop uh, play because France, I believe, has called a timeout. We have Team France with 11 plays and 117. Timeout. Team France, that's the second team timeout. Yards and Team Denmark with uh, 21 plays and 110 yards. What is interesting, Francesco, is that we have an average in Team France of uh, 10 yards per play, while Denmark is having an average of 5.2 yards. As we were uh, mentioning before, uh, a more uh, methodical uh, and, uh, and uh, normal, let's say, offense uh, from Denmark, capable of churning at 4 and 5 yards uh, each play, it, then, uh, France uh, has uh, taken a lot of penalties, a lot of plays with loss of yards uh, on the play and then they have had uh, a few runs uh, uh, as the one that we are uh, watching right now very very good example of a uh, running game by Yanis Pullen that have uh, put uh, their offense uh, once again in a position uh, to strike uh, and to do some damage third and nine ball on the 37 yard line for France Traoré in motion, but it's a pass to Redval Keita, and it is a pass completed for a first down Team France uh, 
just outside uh, the red zone. The ball will be spotted on the 23-yard line. So, a rare case, Dario. Of uh, <laughs> Finally, we can see Baird uh, throwing the ball. And the left-handed guy is, uh, has shown uh, a, good, a good zip of the ball. First and 10, France. Uh, we go back to the running uh, game. We go back to Poulin, but... Uh, uh, I, I believe uh, uh, Denmark is uh, pressing uh, the box uh, and uh, trying uh, now to adjust, uh, as you were saying, to the gashing runs of Poulen uh, that uh, has seemed uh, to find a little bit more difficulty in, uh, in, in these past two or three plays uh, uh, going uh, straight up the middle. Second down, uh, uh, eight yards to go for France. Once again, uh, Poulain, this time, he finds uh, some open space. Uh, he remains uh, at the center of the field, and he has a very good uh, run of uh, 12 yards. So, still no answer, I guess. Uh. The guy is really, really elusive. He's very hard to tackle. He's, uh, he's a short guy, and he runs with a very, very low pad level. So the both things... Uh, put together in the same player uh, uh, could be a nightmare uh, for the <laughs> box players to stop him. I agree, a combination of speed and elusiveness that makes it really difficult on the Danish defense. First down and goal for France that is knocking uh, once again at the Danish door and looking for points. It is again Poulin coming out on the right side. He is uh, tackled but not before he has a gain of about uh, five yards uh, i had the impression for a moment that he had lost his pants uh, i am not sure let's look here at the replay please cover the eyes of the ladies if my analysis is correct uh, okay he has uh, he has the pad shorts uh, so there time isn't uh, there is team no sc scandal on this play That's the first team timeout it will be second and goal uh, for France. Meanwhile, uh, Manfredi Leone leaves uh, the broadcast booth to go down on the field uh, for the traditional uh, halftime interviews. Uh, 150 to play with. Uh, Denmark calling their first time out. Uh, a good uh, occasion this time out uh, to look uh, at the moves of uh, Yanis Polin that uh, probably Dario uh, is the early MVP uh, candidate uh, with, his, uh, with his good uh, running game. I, uh, we, I am awaiting anxiously the halftime statistics uh, because I think he has some very good numbers. In particular, his runs have a very high average, I think. In this moment, my personal MVP is the French offensive line because they are very uh, responsible for uh, a lot of the yards Poulain has run. Number 84 in motion, but the handoff is for number 40, Florian Monduc, with a fullback physique, untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, France. 13 7 the score, with Chevalier coming onto the field for the extra point. Everybody waiting uh, for uh, Poulin to pick up the ball. And instead, uh, after a motion of uh, 84 Manigold, it was number 40, Florian Monduc, uh, a running back of 18 years of age, 180 kilograms uh, per, uh, sorry, 180 centimeters per 103 kilograms from the Paul France uh, Revolution. The kick from Chevalier is up, but I... And it is good. So, the score is now France 14, Denmark 7, 146 to play. Once again, Manigold in motion. Straight up, Monduk untouched uh, with the Danish defense confused by the formation uh, used uh, by the French offense. Uh, not able to put their hands uh, on, the, on the runner. Number 82, Magnus Bus, and number 
12, Lucas Bierg uh, back to return uh, the kickoff uh, from uh, Chevalier. Let's see if uh, Denmark can squeeze in a good drive uh, before uh, halftime and perhaps uh, put some points on the board. I'm sure that is what uh, Coach Carlson has in mind and I'm sure we will see their uh, hurry up uh, offense uh, since we are uh, below two minutes. Denmark still two timeouts. Very dangerous, uh, this uh, choice. to take a great risk because the ball uh, was not showing uh, uh, so much willingness to go outside the bounds. Bus uh, decided not to return the, the ball. Kicking team. First and 10 at 35-yard line. And I think on the last bounce before dying, the ball uh, actually finally uh, rolled uh, outside. So it's a penalty and the ball will be placed uh, on the 35 yard lines uh, so a risk uh, they paid uh, for Denmark that now needs to step it up on offense 145 two timeouts and a good up tempo offense probably Francesco will be they could be it could be enough uh, for the team Denmark uh, to move the chain uh, for the, this drive Handoff uh, to Magnus Norgard, uh, met after a small gain by the French defense, led by number 91, Yves Coco, defensive lineman of 19 years of age. From, he is also from the Paul France uh, Revolution. Second down and seven. This time it is a pass uh, for uh, Steinauer that is met immediately. Uh, no gain. Uh, for Denmark that is using some very strange uh, choices, uh, some very strange uh, calls from the playbook uh, for uh, coach uh, Carlsen. We have a third down, uh, uh, apologies. Uh, uh, he advanced uh, uh, a little bit more and it was a, so it was a third down and three. It is a quick pass to Julius Bunk. Uh, nice catch, first down Denmark. Uh, Denmark now picking up some tempo and also some ground as they venture into French territory on the 49. Pitch to Norgard on the left side. Guarding the area and making sure that there is no gain. Arno Burkel, linebacker of 18 years, also from Paul France Revolution. Two receivers on the left side, uh, one receiver on the right. Uh, immediately, Schwartz decides uh, to run with the ball. And immediately, number 71 uh, for France uh, brings him down. It's uh, Olivier Guillain. Timeout. Team Denmark. That's their second team timeout. Francesco finally Team Denmark uh, called for the timeout. Uh, they have uh, w uh, used a lot of the time left on the clock with na just na for now 21 seconds of the, on the clock. Uh, probably they will have uh, spent too much time, don't you think? Yes, I agree. Uh, and what is very strange is that in some portions, uh, especially of the first quarter, they were coming up to the line faster than they are now in what is uh, a two-minute offense where uh, the hurry up uh, is, uh, is the norm. So as we bo both you and I expected uh, them to come up to the line very quick, but they didn't. And even when they did, uh, the, the play choice uh, did not result in uh, larger chunks of field, but instead of passes and runs that remained uh, inside the field, uh, and they burned a lot of time, 21 seconds and one timeout uh, left uh, for uh, Coach Carlsen. Once again, Schwartz looking for the receivers on the left side. Then he has an open receiver on the right side. And it is number 89 that appeared to push at the beginning uh, of the play, uh, Andreas Paske. And uh, finally, there is a flag. Let's watch, uh, Dario. I had the feeling that uh, Paske pushed off uh, the man covering him. Uh, let's see if this is uh, the call. We will not be able, yes, there it is. Uh, you see that he. <laughs> It looks uh, an ob like an obvious offensive pass interference, but of course, uh, we are not the referees. Number 
16. Elia Krasny. On offense number 81. 15 yards penalty. Repeat third down. 89, I think, was the number that the referee was uh, intending. Uh, so our uh, analysis of the play was uh, correct. Uh, not a Dario, not a penalty that we see often uh, in general at all levels of football. The offensive pass interference normally it is only called when it is really evident. Yeah, but today we can see a great mismatch between the outside receivers and the cornerbacks, uh, with both receivers uh, around between 15 and 20 centimeters taller than the cornerbacks. Uh, so there is a, a mismatch in physicality that uh, probably is the reason for the, this outcome uh, with the cornerbacks uh, uh, pushed uh, far from the, the receivers. Schwartz goes back to pass. He's looking for number 89, and this time he finds him. So Andreas Paske only takes one play to apologize for his penalty with this wonderful reception that is in first down territory. So first down and 10, and I believe uh, Coach Carlsen has called uh, his last, uh, uh, will call his last uh, timeout. Uh, otherwise, uh, as soon as the, as the, Referees uh, blow the whistle. Uh, there is only one second left on the clock. Dario, the ball is being brought back uh, for some reason. Probably holding offense number 68. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. So nullified the reception by Paske. Apologies as we did not uh, pick up the flag uh, on this play. Nikolai Stiborg, offensive lineman, number uh, 68 of Denmark, uh, the guilty party. And I would imagine that unless uh, we want to go with some uh, Hail Mary pass, Dario, the Danish offense will just sit on the ball with only one second left. Uh, and uh, we will uh, immediately pass the microphone uh, to Freddy on the sideline. Team Denmark, Here at team that's their third and last team timeout, timeout this half. Probably Coach Carlsen wants to talk about it with his guys and decide uh, what, uh, what they want to run uh, on this final play. I would not be surprised if maybe some, uh, something up his sleeve. Uh, yep. After seeing uh, this aggressiveness uh, about uh, onside kicks, uh, four down played, uh, probably... I will express some, some trickery like some hook and ladder or, uh, or similar. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to bet uh, on a kneel down. <laughs> one second, uh, one second uh, only on the clock all, 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 all obviously uh, puts you in a safe position that even if something goes wrong, uh, you should not, uh, uh, even if you... Uh, lose the ball on a turnover, you should just make sure that the other team uh, doesn't do anything with it and then the half will be over. And it is uh, a, a strange play with uh, Schwartz moving around uh, in the pocket uh, and eventually finding the warm and comforting the arms of, of a French ball. player. It is also the final play of the first half. France ahead, 14-7. And uh, we wait uh, to pass uh, the mic to Manfredi. Yes, uh, Francesco, give me one minute that Coach Larson is setting himself. As soon as uh, we finish with our uh, halftime interviews, uh, we will provide you with uh, some fresh stats from the National uh, Italian uh, Stats Service uh, led by Massimo Foglio. Coach uh, Lars, uh, thanks again. Uh, just a couple of uh, questions. Uh, everything is balanced between you and France in total offense and whatever. Probably except penalties, except last plays. Okay, it happens. Yeah, this is kind of the game that we expected. This is a close game, tough game. Uh, in there, that's uh, fighting for every single yard we can get, and so do France. It's going to be like this the next two quarters as well. Uh, Alex Lars is doing very well, I think, and uh, the passing game now is a new weapon for Team Denmark. Yeah, we finally get up and running, and uh, it's good for us, and we will have to go back and uh, back to it here in the second half and use it even more. Yeah, thank you very much, and good luck for the rest of the game. Thank you. I give you a lot. 
Okay, guys, this is what uh, we had from uh, Coach uh, Lars Carlsen. We are trying to avoid to keep the interview uh, too long. We will be back from the field when uh, Team France will come back to interview again Coach uh, Manuel Maguet. This is all for the moment. Thank you, Manfredi. Thank you, Coach uh, Carlsen. Uh, and uh, here are the stats uh, from the first half. Uh, uh, we just received them. Uh, nine first downs for Denmark, six first downs for France. Only 38 yards rushing uh, from Denmark and 161 uh, uh, rushing yards from France. As we mentioned, uh, uh, very good uh, French running game in the first half. 106 passing yards from Denmark and only 14 uh, from France, uh, only one completion on one pass attempted uh, uh, the, uh, that we saw in the, the first half, uh, and it was the pass to, to Keita. Penalties, uh, 6 for 46 uh, for uh, France, uh, 5 for 40 for Denmark. Time of possession even, 11 minutes 19 for France, uh, 12 minutes 41 uh, for Denmark. France was uh, 1 for 3 on third downs, and Denmark 2 for 6. Uh, Denmark also tried the fourth down and converted. Dario, some individual stats. The, the leaders uh, at passing the ball uh, for, <laughs> for the France is Bird with uh, one for one for 14 yards. Schwarz on the other side throw 11 on 17 for 106 yards and one touchdown. At rushing, the France, lead, France leader is Yanis bakanti Polin with 10 carries for 123 yards with a whopping average of 12.3. On the other side, Norgord is the leading rusher for Team Denmark with 5 rushes for 20 yards. At receiving, as, as you mentioned before, Kita is the leader for France with 1 reception and 14 yards. On the other side, Bank is the leading receiver with 4 receptions and 47 yards. But the lone touchdown pass for Team Denmark has been scored by Steinauer. On the defensive side, the leading tackler is Pernier for France with 4.5 total, uh, total tackles. On the other side, Tawake is the leader with three tackles. That was uh, the team and individual uh, halftime stats. Uh, we take our pause uh, and uh, we will meet here again for the beginning of the third quarter. 15 uh, minutes approximately from now, 14-7 France the score, uh, and we take now a break. Ecco Elena che lotta per l'ambiente, per la biodiversità, per un sistema di produzione sostenibile che rispetti la terra e chi la lavora. Perché il mondo si cambia con le scelte di ogni giorno. Alce Nero, agricoltori biologici dal 1978. RDS insieme a te Voglia di Grandi eventi Diversi terreni Diverse condizioni e difficoltà Non ci fermano Una vera squadra È quella che si mette in gioco Quella dove si combatte Non ci si arrende Dove si suda 
per farci trovare pronti alle sfide del futuro. Quando cresci, lo fai con la squadra, fianco a fianco, insieme. Insieme è perfetto.
back online uh, as we are only three minutes and a few seconds uh, from the beginning of the third quarter and we have uh, Manfredi positioning himself uh, on the French sideline to interview the French coach. Manfredi. Here we are, uh, friends, uh, with Coach Maguet approaching our uh, radio camera on the field. It's right there for you, especially for you as uh, being a star. So, Coach, you are leading the game, but it's tough and close as expected. Denmark is passing a bit more than probably they did in the previous two games. Are you countermeasuring this thing? I mean, they change their tendencies. They try to throw the ball and uh, will adjust pretty well, pretty half. This the first half, I mean, so let's keep going like that. Okay, the defense is performing very well, I think, uh, even covering uh, good passes by Alex Schwartz. Yeah, 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 yeah. they do. The, they had a big play on the fade, I mean, but that's, that happens when uh, you throw the ball. So we're just going to try to keep going like that. It's good for me. The defense play a very good game. And the running game, your the running game is get tremendous. Yeah, finally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, we had a new quarterback, so we, we needed time a little bit to time up everything. Today was short uh, time to do it, but uh, now it seems all right, so let's, let's keep going. Nothing is a show for now. Thank you, it's ready for kickoff. Enjoy the game. Scappiamo. Thank you, Manfredi, and uh, as we were mentioning, uh, you heard uh, from the voice uh, of the French head coach, uh, Emmanuel Maguet, that obviously uh, he needed, with a new quarterback, some time to settle in. And uh, in order to do that, uh, he had to rely on his running game. And what a running game uh, from uh, Yannick Poulin uh, that has already surpassed uh, 100 yards. Uh, uh, Dario, 10 rushes, 123 yards. Uh, so a whopping 12.3 uh, uh, yards uh, per carry and a touchdown for uh, Poulin uh, that... Uh, uh, together with his offensive line, uh, so that uh, you are happy, uh, are uh, our uh, favorites uh, for MVP so far. Let's say that if we were voting now, they would probably be our candidates. Absolutely, Francesco. Uh, probably this whopping average uh, uh, is just uh, about uh, three big, big plays uh, he has done. With just uh, uh, ten carries, we cannot really... Uh, mentioned a lot uh, the average for carry but the guy is having an impact a real impact on this game and definitely the the quality of the french running game is the reason that france is seven points ahead uh, as uh, we prepare uh, with france that will also receive uh, the kickoff uh, of the third quarter number 28 uh, Jakob Sundergaard will uh, kick off uh, to number 14, Jonas Pernier, and number 16, uh, Elia uh, Kramy, the kick returners, and we're all set. The referee blows the whistle, and we're about to start the third quarter of the third place game. Just a quick reminder, tonight at 9, the final between Austria and Sweden. The ball ro takes a, a weird bounce and is finally picked up uh, by Pernier that uh, flies on the left sideline, enters Danish territory, one man to beat, and he beats him for a touchdown, Team France! Fantastic kick return by Pernier that uh, had to fight with a bad bounce in front of him from the ball, picked it up, uh, crossed the field, came on the close sideline, burned at least three Danish players, uh, the last of which, number 28, Jakob Sondergaard. 12 seconds have elapsed on the clock, uh, and we have uh, six more points on the board. The score is 20 to seven for Team France. The kick from Chevalier is good, and the score is now 21-7. Meanwhile, number 80 for Denmark, uh, Lukas Bach, is uh, down on the Danish sideline and is being attended. Meanwhile, here it is. Uh, he picks it up on a bounce, Luke goes up uh, midfield, and then he just uh, turns on the Jets on the left sideline. And Francesco, this is the first kickoff return for a touchdown in this tournament. So we, we had the, the pleasure as the first play of the third quarter to bring you 
a kick return for a touchdown. So now it will be France and Clément Chevalier kicking off to Lucas Bierg, number 12, and Magnus Bus, number 82, as the score, as France has now opened up an important lead in this game. The score reads 21-7 with only 12 seconds uh, off uh, the 12 minutes of the third quarter. Here's the kick from uh, Chevalier. Not very high and uh, bounces at the 20-yard line. Is uh, picked up uh, by Bierg uh, that tries to turn on the other side of the field but he is uh, met by the coverage uh, team of, of France uh, number 89 Yassin Sifeddin on the tackle uh, a loss I believe uh, from the position where he actually uh, picked up the ball in fact uh, Denmark will start the offensive operations of the third quarter from the 11-yard line. First down and 10, uh, Team Denmark. It's a pass complete uh, to Julius Bunk. Uh, for uh, a gain of 13 yards and a Danish first down. First down, ball on the 25 yard line uh, for the Danish offense. It is another pass, uh, this time uh, the intended receiver was number three, Victor Mazzanti. The pass falls incomplete. Second and ten, Dario. Francesco, not the best way to start the second half for Team Denmark. Uh, now everything is more com complicated and they, they need to score fast and to stay uh, in, uh, in the hunt of Team France. Definitely. Uh, I think that uh, scores at the beginning and at the end uh, of, uh, of the halves of play are the ones that have uh, the biggest psychological impact. This time, Schwartz rolls out on the left, uh, fakes a throw, and then uh, closes uh, the ball and uh, runs with it for a gain of 11 in a first down uh, for the Danish team. Good job uh, by Schwartz uh, that... Uh, decided not to I'm sorry he came out a little bit short so it will be third down and one ball on the 34 yard line this time it is a run and I believe that uh, the runner advanced uh, beyond uh, the first down marker it should be a first down for Denmark uh, and when uh, coach uh, Carlsen needs uh, some difficult uh, yards up the middle. It's always August uh, Lillie, the ball carrier. Big number 24 uh, gets enough uh, for a first down. Ball on the 36, and this time first down and 10 uh, for Denmark. Once again, a handoff to Lillie, but uh, there is a, a flag uh, from the headlinesman Lillie has a very nice run of uh, approximately nine yards he falls uh, uh, according uh, to the crew just short of the first down let's see what the call is on this flag offsides defense number 71 that penalty is declined result of the play is first down Obviously, the penalty is declined as the gain was much uh, more than just the five yards, plus uh, the generous spot of the crew uh, allowed uh, the referee, allowed, sorry, Denmark uh, to gain another first down ball on the 46-yard line for Schwarz that goes back to pass and finds open 
in the middle of the field, Julius Bunk. It is a 12 yard connection for another Danish first down. Francesco, in the afternoon in which uh, Team Denmark decided uh, to throw m a lot more the ball, uh, the receiver uh, has responded in a very great way. They are playing very well and they searching for a lot of soft zones in the coverage. First down from the French uh, 42. It's a carry for August Lillie. Some very tough yards uh, on the right side. And I believe that... Uh, <laughs> Also, Lillie had a little problem with his pants. Uh, uh, some, uh, some loose belts today uh, in the game. A gain uh, of uh, six yards for Lillie that remains uh, in the game once uh, his equipment uh, is fixed. <laughs> and it is second down and four for the Danish team, Dario, that has uh, been able, uh, without uh, major gains, but just their methodical uh, uh, play, to uh, have a good drive. Here Lillie has a little uh, problem of friction with the field. He falls down and comes out uh, for uh, being spelled by number 32, Magnus Norgard, that checks in uh, at uh, the running back uh, position. Basically, no gain for Lillie. And uh, an interesting third down and six uh, for the Danish offense. Reverse ball to Julius Bunk uh, that uh, comes up on the right sideline and is met by Clement Chevalier that with his tackle uh, probably avoids a first down uh, for the Danish team. Good open field tackle by Chevalier. Meanwhile, uh, as we were uh, watching uh, the last play... Holding. Uh, on the offense, number 72, 10 yards penalty from the previous part, repeat, third down. The last uh, offensive play by Denmark is nullified by a holding. France accepts uh, the penalty and pushes uh, Denmark back to the 48, uh, where uh, they will play a third down and 15. It's, a, it's an obvious uh, passing situation, but uh, he, Schwarz is pushed out of the pocket, eventually finds uh, Norgard, but as an effect of the very good uh, uh, front pressure by the French team, it's a short pass, definitely not uh, first down material. It is uh, a gain of approximately seven that gives us uh, a fourth down and eight yards to go for the Danish team that doesn't even think of punting this ball. But there's no way to think about it. They are too deep in the, in the field, they are too, too, too far behind in the score. So it's time to play the, the, sec the, fourth, court, the, the fourth down. Ball on the 41 yard line for uh, the Danish team, Schwarz, looking uh, for an open receiver. The man that he was looking for was uh, Andreas Paske. He never had control of the ball. It is an incomplete uh, and a first down France. Uh, I was saying that during this past uh, Danish drive, uh, uh, we have uh, witnessed uh, the arrival uh, of the fifth place team, uh, the Finnish team uh, that is just uh, taking uh, his uh, position here in the stands. Uh, let's see if our crew can give us uh, a shot in the stands of the of the Finnish team that beat uh, Spain 39 on the right side of uh, from our uh, viewpoint. First down and 10, France 41 yard line. The handoff is for Yanis Polin. Stopped in his tracks uh, for no gain by number 45, the linebacker David Helquist from the Copenhagen Towers. 18 years for David. Team France is ready to play the second down. Again, uh, Poulin uh, with the carry. Again, uh, a no gain, actually a small loss on the play. It should be a third down and 11 coming up.
Third down and 11, France breaks out of the huddle. And of course, uh, Dario, as you, uh, here is uh, a shot of Team Finland here in the stadium. As uh, you have certainly noticed, France is slowing things down now that they're up by uh, 14. This time, a run on the right side of the field for uh, Red Valketa that takes by surprise uh, the Danish defense. Uh, probably expecting some kind of pass play or at least uh, not this type of run on uh, on a fake uh, in the middle and then uh, Keita coming up uh, from left to right picking up the ball and uh, not stopping before he is tackled on the 36 yard line first down and 10 from friends Motion for uh, Nikolai Brosola, but the ball is in the sure hands. Sorry, uh, motion for uh, Odren Kliku, but the ball is in the sure hands of Yanis Pulen for a gain of over 10 yards uh, and another first down for Team France. The French coaching staff uh, is doing a great job setting the run uh, to. Uh, to close the defense inside the box uh, and then to find some room to, uh, to run on the outside. First and 10 from the 23 for Team France. Uh, this time uh, the quarterback Baird is rolling out. He's finding the sideline. He seemed uh, to go out of bounds but then he decides uh, to keep go upfield and it is another French first down. Uh, it should be first down and goal with this very good 17-yard uh, run for the French team. First and 10, first and goal, I'm sorry, from the seven-yard line, almost the six-yard lines from the French team that is once again knocking uh, at the door uh, of uh, the Danish team. And, uh, some uh, movement uh, uh, called uh, by the center judge that uh, threw the flag. I was saying uh, France has been able to take control of this game and now come extremely close to scoring again by basically never putting the ball up in the air, Dario. Francesco, the Danish defense is very physical. There's no foul for illegal substitution. This we got the flag. We have still first down. The, the defense is very physical, has a lot of strength, but uh, French uh, is answering uh, with a lot of speed, and the Danish defense is really suffering the speed, especially on the outside. France pushed back uh, five yards uh, by the penalty. Once again, Baird goes back, looks to pass, then decides to run on the left sideline near us. He is uh, stopped a few times, but he's able to roll twice and I believe land at the uh, either very close or inside the, uh, the end zone. I believe uh, that uh, the mark has been made and he is at the half yard line. What a wonderful run by the French quarterback. It will be second and goal and you will see by the replay that at least twice uh, we had the impression that he would be taken down. Dario, here the fact that he is a defensive back and that he's probably more uh, used uh, to move around and dance around uh, on the field uh, came to the aid of Beard that uh, sent looking for butterflies at least uh, two Danish defenders. Let's see what comes up here. Second down and goal. The big man, uh, number 40, Florian Munduk, already one touchdown for time him today. Out. Team France. That's team timeout number one. First time out for Team France, Dario, back to you, while we hope, uh, here it is, uh, the wonderful uh, run by uh, Baird, you see, he comes back and I don't think he really has any intention to pass, uh, he calls for some blockers, here he looks to be tackled, but he flips on, him, flips, uh, on himself uh, with this wonderful almost uh, 360 and then finally David Tawake takes him down but not before he has gained uh, all 12 yards uh, and uh, put France in this very very 
uh, advantageous uh, second down uh, and goal from the one yard line. But Francesco, I thought that uh, it was an intended uh, pass play, but after the first reading uh, without uh, any any receiver available, uh, probably he decided not to take a risk uh, with this short uh, uh, field uh, behind him uh, and decided to take the ball in his hands and try to do something uh, without taking, as I said, uh, any uh, kind of risk. Don't forget that this guy is not, uh, at the first glance, uh, a quarterback, so better not to force the ball uh, in double coverage. Still Monduk uh, taking the ball, lowering his head, his helmet, uh, and strolling basically untouched into the end zone for the fourth score today for the French team that is now taken a very big lead in this game. 27 to 7, the score in favor of uh, Team France as we uh, await uh, for uh, Clément Chevalier's uh, extra point. Uh, Dario, we were uh, uh, we expecting some kind of re response uh, from the Danish team that was uh, hit uh, while uh, they were still cold uh, by the wonderful uh, return, by the wonderful kick return by Pernier. Not a lot uh, from an offensive standpoint uh, from Denmark uh, on their first uh, possession. And France, that comes right back to their uh, running game, mixing... Uh, uh, inside runs uh, to runs uh, to a, to external uh, uh, to an external running game uh, that uh, has taken Denmark by surprise every time. And now with the second touchdown uh, of the day for Florian Munduk, number 40, 3:44 to play, and a score that uh, honestly we did not expect. 28-7 France. Francesco, I think that France is showing. Uh, uh, too much uh, velocity on the field uh, for, uh, for Team Denmark. They are really fast, uh, both sides uh, side of the ball. They are uh, running with great speed and uh, with great uh, willingness. And there's no way for the Danish defense uh, to stop them. On the other side uh, is uh, some kind of bend but not break defense for the Team France. He has allowed some yards uh, to the, a very balanced uh, offense by Team Denmark, but uh, they cannot score. Once again, Birg and Boos back uh, for Denmark, but the ball rolls uh, out of the field of play, so it will be a first down and 10 on the 35 uh, for Denmark. I agree. I agree with your analysis and uh, looking also uh, as we... Uh, Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team, five yard penalty, re kick. So, uh, Denmark elects to uh, make France a re kick. I was saying, uh, as we also uh, look into tonight's uh, final game, uh, uh, 28 points from the French offense, okay, seven from the special teams, but still 21 points from the French offense that was kept uh, scoreless by the Swedish defense. Maybe as we look also to tonight's game, uh, Sweden's defense uh, is uh, uh, something that uh, the Austrian offense uh, will have uh, his, uh, its hands full uh, as uh, uh, now we are seeing uh, the true uh, capacity of the French offense. Meanwhile, some confusion from the Danish team. The ball, of course, on a kickoff is, is live as soon as it passes 10 yards. Uh, it was recovered uh, by the Danish team that should have uh, some really good field position, but uh, some moments of panic uh, for Denmark that almost uh, lost the handle on this kickoff. So, first down and 10 for Denmark. Ball on the 43-yard line for uh, Alex Schwarz. Eighteen years of age, uh, one meter eighty-five per eighty-seven kilograms. The Triangle Razorbacks are the club team of uh, Alex Schwartz. Some uh, confusion on the Danish sideline. In fact, the referees are stopping the play. Another flag uh, came onto the field this time by the back judge. Denmark, number eleven, five-yard penalty. Still first down. And, it, and as it is uh, almost uh, always the case, Dario, when the back judge uh, 
loses uh, a yellow piece of fabric, it's because the time clock uh, has gone to zero. Five yards back uh, for Denmark. Not a good way to start. First and ten. Schwartz back to pass. Looking for Lillie. He... Francesco, from a technical standpoint, uh, finally, Team France has switched uh, on a nickel defense. Uh, probably they, they know that uh, now Team Denmark needs to throw the ball a lot, uh, needs to score fast, uh, and so the running game uh, will be not the, uh, the first glance, the first choice for them. So a defense more focused uh, on preventing the pass from France. As we saw, the first uh, play of the drive was a pass and it was incomplete to Lillier. Now Lillier goes back into his more natural uh, role of power runner. The gain is five yards. The ball is back at the original line of scrimmage. But this will be a third down and ten for Team Denmark. Meanwhile, number 51 from France uh, is down, Stéphane Carden, a linebacker, 18 years of age for Stéphane, uh, a meter 79 for uh, 100 kilograms from the Paul France uh, Revolution. He seems to be a uh, victim of cramps, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, look at what the, 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 the trainers are doing. Uh, for sure, there's a cramp to the, to the calf, to the Let, left calf. Let's just say that we don't want to see any player down, but that if we have to have a player down, this is probably the best uh, <laughs> uh, type of injury that a football player can hope for. Yeah, basically, you cannot uh, define it uh, as, a, as an injury. It's just a condition. Meanwhile, a very nice uh, breeze uh, is uh, keeping us company. And even though the field temperature is uh, 30 degrees, the weather is very friendly. Of course, especially here in the... In the stands where we are covered by the sun but also on the field we can see a lot of flags uh, moving around giving us the impression of a, a nice breeze meanwhile Lillie once again trying to make way up the middle well defended by the French defensive line no gain or actually maybe one yard, uh, one yard gain. This time, uh, unfortunately, it is August Lillier, the player, uh, down on the ground. The referee timeout, fourth down uh, coming up for the Danish team. And I believe that uh, coach uh, Carlsen is once again, Dario, thinking of going for it on this fourth down. 2.55. Uh, I agree, Francesco. Now is a four down uh, situation and uh, there's no reason for them uh, not to play it. Uh, a punt uh, will get their offense off the field and they need to score. And basically their defense uh, has facing really hard times to stop uh, the French offense. So there's no way that Coach Carson could uh, elect to punt this ball. Here is probably uh, the play where uh, Lillier initially hurt himself. It was on the first down uh, on, the, on the missed uh, uh, catch. He carried again the ball here on the second and third down, but he looked uh, uh, somewhat slower than his usual self. Uh, he, uh, he was able to step out of the field uh, on his own uh, power and uh, in a surprising fashion. Uh, Dario, as, as always, we're wrong <laughs> because Lasse Torso, number 16, uh, the Danish punter, is out uh, to kick the ball. I think uh, number 16, uh, Elia Krami, is back to kick. It's a fake. It's a pass for number three, Victor Mazzanti, that catches the ball. He actually caught it uh, short of a first down, but turn around and uh, it's uh, a basketball uh, pass, almost like uh, when you feed the center underneath the board. David Tawake to Mazzanti, the connection. And Dario, Coach Carlsen uh, surprised uh, everyone in the stadium, including our cameras and uh, ourselves uh, with this uh, trick play that uh, Team France was not able to stop. First down and 10, 45 yard line. Alex Schwartz, back to pass. He has uh, Number 89, Andreas Pasque on the right side, tackled uh, immediately by number 16, Elia Krami. 
Second down and uh, seven on the way for Team Denmark. Meanwhile, the clock uh, is winding down on the end of this quarter. 1.40 to play here in uh, Arcoveggio. Alex Schwartz receives the ball. Once again, it's a handoff to Magnus Norgard. Dario, a strange uh, uh, game, uh, game, uh, game plan by coach uh, uh, Carlsen. The ball in the air uh, a little bit uh, uh, more on the first drive and then this, uh, let's say, return to the, in fact, uh, the, the touchdown, the lone touchdown by Denmark was also on a pass play. But now back to what is basically, what basically uh, amounts to a running game. Meanwhile, third down and five, Schwartz this time means to put the ball in the air he does he completes and it's a first down for Denmark Julius Bunk Dario Francesco as we mentioned before Team France switch on a nickel defense a nickel package so probably coach Carlsen wants to stay put on the on the ground to make the French defense to come back to a base package probably the chess play is about that First and ten already for Denmark. Meanwhile, you saw the replay of Bunk's uh, reception. Very good uh, movement from him to find some open space uh, behind uh, the line. Flag on the play. Play stopped. Uh, penalty on the offense. Full start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Not the first time on this drive uh, that... Uh, Denmark has to absorb uh, five yards back uh, on first down. Meanwhile, uh, if I can get our broadcast team uh, to give us a shot, uh, I believe uh, Team Austria is entering uh, uh, Arcoveggio Stadium. First and 15 for Denmark. Back, Schwarz, back to play. Looks for, and I think he found uh, number 84, Julius Bunk. And probably Francesco, you were right, uh, and it looks like a complete pass to Bunk. Nice, really nice job by him, uh, uh, taking his foot on the ground before coming out of bounds. Thank you to our broadcast team that is always, always uh, very on the ball and always uh, basically uh, at, gives us everything that we ask, including this shot for the Austrian fans, perhaps uh, this is that the are end watching. Of the third quarter. Meanwhile, we've come to the end of the third quarter. Great concentration by Bunk Dario on that ball that was almost intercepted but then tipped. Here it is uh, by the French defender, number 16, uh, Elia Krame. Good job uh, by Bunk that was able to complete uh, the reception. We have praised the Danish receivers before and I want to go on doing that because they are really playing uh, a solid game tonight, th this afternoon. Denmark needs to score right here on this drive as they're down three touchdowns. They have a very complex uh, job ahead of them also on the defensive side stopping the French game. But I think that uh, if they want to have any chance to re-enter the possibility of winning uh, this uh, bronze medal uh, uh, game, they need some points on this drive, Dario, because they need three drives with touchdowns. I agree with you, Francesco. French offense uh, should not be a factor in this game for them. They make uh, their, their offense to stay on the field in every way if, you want, if they want to win. Schwartz keeps the ball himself, gains a good chunk of yards, not for a first down, but uh, five yards is the result of this quarterback keeper. And uh, we are uh, now looking at a third down and two for the Danish team. Interesting stats. Schwarz gives some, si gives some signals to his center, comes back, flips the ball to number 30, David Espersen, that comes out on the left side, and I think he has enough for the first down. Manfredi. Yes, sir. We have a total offense uh, similar in terms of uh, gain. 
but uh, completely different in terms of plays because France played 26 plays and 234 yards while Denmark is a double 50 plays 239 yards so almost the same and what is different is the passing game because uh, France is a one on one and Denmark is a Meanwhile, eight, 18 on is intercepted by number 16 Ilaya Krami and so this drive for Denmark ends abruptly. Back to you, Manfredi. Yeah, and uh, now with this correction is 18 on 28 with two interceptions. So Denmark is uh, really uh, passing a lot, but uh, they're, they are not probably doing uh, in the way they expected. Good job uh, on this play by Krame that uh, stayed uh, in the position and basically covered uh, the Spanish receiver, uh, sorry, the Danish receiver that was Julius Bunk on a slant, uh, stayed at home and covered it. Uh, it was, uh, he picked the ball up almost uh, from the ground. He uh, may have been tipped slightly, but the result of the play, it's an interception, Dario, and uh, exactly what Denmark did not need uh, happened as the French offense is back on the field and we can expect uh, a healthy dose of running and in fact here it is number 30 Redval yeah. Keita taking over on the right sideline and you mentioned it too much speed for Denmark today touchdown Team France that closes off this third place game with their fifth score of the day 34-7 as we now wait for the PAT and uh, it's an 85 yard run for Keita that uh, puts himself uh, to 142 yards uh, and good for leading his team at this moment uh, a terrible blow for team Denmark uh, they have done in two plays uh, all the things that uh, he shouldn't shouldn't have to do uh, now is really hard it's a four score four score game uh, and uh, it look uh, very close to impossible to overcome for them in the meanwhile the kick is good so we France is leading the way 35 to 7 against in team Denmark Two interceptions uh, today, Crame and Chevalier, the interceptors for Team France. Meanwhile, once again, you mentioned it quite correctly, Dario. Too much speed for Denmark. Red Valketa turns on the afterburners on the near sideline and uh, goes all the way for uh, six points. 35-7 is the score. And the, and the signal that uh, this is a really bad game from Denmark is the fact that we have basically just started the final quarter of play, Dario, and France has already two running backs with more than 100 yards. The strange fact uh, is that uh, this team is 100% uh, committed to the run. Just one uh, pass play in three quarters, uh, but uh, no way for Team Denmark to find a way to stop uh, both runs uh, outside and inside. They cannot stop uh, both uh, situations. Just one and usually the other one uh, makes a lot of damage in their backfield. The fact that uh, two runners have been able to go over 100 is a testament to what you were mentioned before. And it, that is the fantastic job of the French uh, offensive line that is opening uh, holes for all the runners uh, uh, quite often today we have seen that the first hands that Denmark is able to put on the French runner happen already in the second level it's all it's often the linebackers and not the defensive linemen that are the first one able to touch the runners lots of uh, running space uh, today uh, for the French team and, uh, and as you were mentioning the a French team that has only thrown the ball once today as a, as a reminder, if uh, we ever needed one, that in football, if you are capable of doing something very well, you don't need, uh, you don't need uh, much more else uh, in order to win a game. You just need to execute well what you, what you know. Absolutely, Francesco. They're executing uh, about, uh, I think, two or three plays, uh, not, not more than that, mm, with some uh, nuances, but... Uh, the, the concept uh, are just two, inside run uh, and an outside run. And they're doing uh, perfectly, basically perfectly. There's no way for Team Denmark to, to stop them. 
Meanwhile, uh, some flags on display, a long discussion on the Danish sideline uh, for the, today's uh, refereeing crew. Le we should uh, be approaching the moment uh, where uh, uh, the referee will tell us all we about it. We have two fouls on the play. The first one is live ball. Offsides, kicking team. That causes, that's a five yards penalty and re-kick. We have dead ball foul, personal foul. Late hit on returning team number 26, 15 yards penalty will be applied to the kickoff. So, five yards on France and 15 on Denmark. The end result is 10 yards extra for the kicking team for France that will. Uh, uh, evidently, as you can see, kick off uh, Cle Clément Chevalier from the 45. Uh, Bunk and Bierg uh, deep almost uh, on the goal line for Denmark. But it is a very sh uh, short, high and short kick uh, for uh, France uh, that uh, does not want a return uh, and uh, who was uh, perhaps trying to surprise Denmark. Nikolai Nielsen, uh, defensive back number 19, uh, caught the kick by Clemenceau and uh, basically just uh, kneeled down. First down and 10 for Team Denmark, stunned by the very, very surprising uh, result and score 35-7 and uh, coach Carlsen has decided uh, to make a change uh, at the quarterback position as he has done in almost every game actually I believe in every game uh, that Denmark has played so far it is not Alex Schwartz anymore it is uh, Christopher Carstens uh, the quarterback number 18 So straight formation for Team Denmark at the second and ten. Carsten throwing the ball. Nice catch by Steinauer, number 14, still up. I think he actually lost a little bit of ground because he started running east-west instead of north-south. But he eventually got enough for a Danish first down, Dario, on the 44-yard line. Yeah, the receiver was searching for some room to, to run the ball and taking some extra yards. Again, Carstens is the quarterback. And for the second play in a row, the French defense is able to get to him. Number 98, Christopher Fontenaer, defensive lineman, 18 years of age from the Paul France Revolution, a meter 90 for 130 kilos, was able to bat the ball uh, down, incomplete pass for Denmark. Uh, and there's another interception for Carlsen. Uh, this time it was number 14, John, uh, sorry, Jonas Pernier. Another interception this and uh, this time is... Uh, you can uh, see here in the replay not uh, not a lot of change between the old and the new quarterback uh, as on the third play of his first drive uh, at quarterback uh, Carstens uh, throws the third uh, Danish pick uh, of the day so Pernier, Cramé and Chevalier basically the entire French backfield with an interception today Dario yeah I think them uh, cannot afford to throw picks uh, instead of the touchdowns and France continues with their uh, very effective uh, running game. The handoff is to number 40, Florian Monduc. Already two touchdowns for him today. More than 10 yards on, uh, on this uh, run. First down and 10 from the 44 for Team France. There's no reason for Team France to change their game plan. And so we could... We can see another run play in the, in the very last one. Another inside run for Team France and approximately five yards gain on the field by number 14, Florian Munduk. France is going uh, 
to the big guy in this part of the game. Uh, one one uh, meter eighty per one hundred and three kilograms for the eighteen-year-old uh, from the Paul France Revolution. Actually, France uh, is not even waiting until the full uh, extent of the time clock, uh, so they are not yet in total, uh, uh, let's say, uh, time control mode. This time it's a pass on the left side to number 83, Gabin Le, also from the Paul France Revolution, and it is a first down for Team France that will uh, snap uh, the next ball. Uh, from the 34 yard line. Francesco, in this drive, Team France is showing uh, finally a different look uh, at offense with uh, three receivers and uh, quite a different formation. But the game plan is uh, always the same with a lot of inside runs. We have seen the second uh, pass attempt uh, by Bird. But the plan uh, is always the same, basically because this team is built uh, for running the ball. Four yards on the gain uh, on this uh, last uh, uh, run play. Once again, this time, the runner is number 27, Odrian Clico, looking for the right sideline. Has a first down and more as he is pushed out of bounds on the 14-yard line for a gain of 16 and a first down and 10 for France once again visiting the Danish red zone as it has been often the case today. The struggles at containing the outside runs for Danish defense continues. Uh, we have seen a lot of time that uh, the defensive end was cut by the, the block of the receiver. Once again, an attempt to pass the ball on the left side. Uh, this time, the pass uh, was intended for number 81. Uh, David Traoré is uh, incomplete. Uh, it will be second down uh, and 10 coming up uh, for uh, Maceo Baird and Team France. My apologies, uh, five yards uh, were lost on the play, so the play was considered uh, as a backward pass, so the ball was live, recovered by friends, second and 15, handoff to Audrey Clico, looking again to exploit uh, the sideline, this time the far sideline, but also this time it's uh, well guarded by the Danish defense, uh, only a small gain of uh, two yards that will make this next play third down and 13 uh, for Team France. No receivers in uh, this uh, formation. It's a straight ahead run for Clico. Number four uh, emerges uh, from the scrum. It is the linebacker number 18, August Perry, for Denmark, uh, stopping the play on its tracks uh, and uh, making the next play a fourth down uh, and long, fourth down and, uh, and 12 yards to go approximately. Three, two, one. A delay of game, I think, uh, will be called against Team France unless, uh, uh, yeah, timeout was called. Timeout, Team France. That's the timeout number two. It. Uh, we had the. We had the feeling that uh, Team France was taking a bit too long in the huddle, and uh, uh, their sidelines, fortunately for them, noticed that the clock was almost uh, expiring and was able to call the. Second time out, uh, only 5.31 to play in this game that I believe Dario has already told us who will be the third uh, team uh, 
the gold medal team of this uh, Euro 2019. I agree, Francesco. I feel that uh, it's uh, very, very, very hard for Team Denmark to overcome uh, these four scores with just uh, 5.31 on the clock. And also and the ba basically ball. also because uh, we haven't seen uh, their offense moving the ball uh, really a lot tonight. We, we were expecting a tight game and it wasn't and it was not because of a very, very good performance by the French offense that with their third strength quarterback and basically no passing game was able to this is a direct snap to number 40 that gave the ball back to number 30, Keita Redval. The pass was for their quarterback, number 8, Maceo Baird. But the play was well read by the Danish defense. Flag on the play. Direct snap to Munduk that gave the ball back to Keita. The forward pass was for... Beard, well short of the first down. The ineligible man downfield on the offense, number 65. That penalty is declined. First down, Denmark. As it is the case, uh, sometimes when you try these very complex trick plays, uh, uh, a portion of the offensive line went down uh, too far. The result of the play is a first down for Team Denmark. Ball on the 12 yard line. And the quarterback remains number 18, Christopher Carstens. Twin left, twin right uh, for uh, Coach Lassen. It is obviously very difficult uh, now uh, for Denmark also because uh, uh, France uh, is uh, in a sort of prevent uh, defensive uh, formation that will allow small gains but will n try and negate obviously the, the big gain. David Espersen, number 30, the ball carrier for Denmark. Uh, gain of three on the play, second and seven, still Espersen in the backfield. This time it is a pass. The, re the intended receiver was number 89, Pasque. Not a lot of uh, synchronization between quarterback and receiver as the ball fell uh, a few yards uh, behind the intended uh, receiver. Third down and seven coming up uh, for Team Denmark that I think Dario, for the first time today, looks uh, as if they have conceded uh, the match to their opponents. Uh, the the non-verbal of the Danish team uh, kind of tells us they probably they are not uh, in this game anymore. And of course, as soon as that was our supposition, we have a wonderful diving catch by number 89, Andreas Paske. Fantastic athletic gesture by uh, this uh, H-back of almost uh, two meters uh, that dives for a first down, first and 10, exactly on the 30 yard line for Denmark. Karstens rolls out on the right, looks for an open receiver. This time it's uh, Paske again. He rumbles ahead for uh, nine yards uh, in a second down and one, uh, second down and two uh, coming up for uh, Team Denmark. Four-man front uh, for France, uh, once again putting pressure. The ball is for David Espersen that uh, runs with it uh, and gains sufficient yardage to move the chains again. Denmark nearing midfield, uh, clock that stops uh, for the time necessary for the referees to put the ball back down. 3.35 to play and ticking. First and 10 on the 48 for Denmark. It is a pass play for uh, Karstens that uh, rolls right again. 
Paske, the intended receiver. This time, uh, Ilaya Krami already one interception for him today. Francesco Paske is on fire in this uh, end of the, third, of the fourth quarter. He seems to be, uh, his quarterback seems to be locked on uh, uh, number 89, uh, Dario. You're right in this portion of the game. Reverse ball to number 84, uh, Julius Bunk, that finds the right sideline. A gain of 16 and a first down and 10 for Team Denmark on the 34. Good play here uh, by Team Denmark and coach. Uh, Carlsen does not uh, give up uh, his uh, really aggressive style full of uh, different uh, tricks. Hand off to Magnus Norgard uh, coming towards the near sideline, the Danish sideline. Good gain for him uh, on this run. Five yards, second and five for Denmark. Probably with some uh, backups on the field uh, in the French defense. Uh, finally, the Danish offense uh, start to have some sparks. <laughs> some sort of rhythm. Uh, this time, Karstens rolls out left. Finds once again number 14, Jonas Pernier, for his second interception of the day. Fourth from the French team. Pernier still up on the 40, on the 30, on the 20. On the 10, touchdown, Team France. Dario, maybe we should stop. <laughs> yes. We have to stop to praise the Danish defense. The Danish offense, Apologies sorry. to our uh, Danish uh, friends uh, at home. Uh, once again. Uh, fourth interception today by a Danish quarterback. Uh, I think Francesco too much punishment for them. Uh, uh, I think that uh, they they don't deserve the, this kind of punishment. Uh, they have they haven't played so bad uh, uh, at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Uh, the total scoring, uh, the total offense uh, between uh, the two teams uh, was quite similar. So um, these four interceptions, these four turnaround turnaways. Uh, uh, has paid a lot of price for, uh, for the team Denmark, but uh, they don't deserve the, this, uh, this 35 points differential on the scoreboard. 42 to 7 with the PAT by uh, Chevalier, 207 to play. Meanwhile, uh, in the center of your screen, the replay of the return by Jonas Pernier. He is a defensive back, but he has very good hand skills. Uh, uh, he is uh, not by mistake uh, the one of the two kick returners uh, for uh, coach uh, Emmanuel Maggi that today definitely chose the right game plan. 42 to 7 the score. Good play from uh, France both on offense and defense. Again, Chevalier ready to kick off after the sixth French uh, touchdown today. Only won the score for Denmark, 42 to 7. It's again a short kick. It's picked up uh, by Lillier on the left sideline. He eludes uh, a first French defender and it is then accompanied uh, out of bounds by number 84, Terence Manigold. First and ten for uh, Team Denmark, 2.03 to play. Ball spotted on the 44-yard line. Still uh, Christopher Karstens uh, at quarterback. Low snap, uh, immediate handoff uh, to David Espersen. Uh, gain uh, of uh, three yards, second and seven coming up.
again. Uh, Another tipped pass this time. It was Yassim Benoit, the linebacker, 18 years old from Dalla Cournet Flash. Uh, another great job by the French defense defending uh, the Danish pass offense. Third down and seven uh, for Team Denmark. Norgard uh, in the backfield uh, with Karstens. Victor Mazzanti isolated on the left side. Uh, two wide receivers on the right. One of these two wide receivers is number 84, Julius Bunk. Uh, good catch. Eight yards, uh, the gain on the play. First down, Team Denmark. Karstens, back to pass, has deep Mazzanti. The pass falls incomplete thanks to the good coverage of number 10, Paul Meunier. 17 years for Meunier, also from the Paul France Revolution. Second and 10 for Team Denmark. A little little bit overthrown this, pa this pass by Karsten. Uh, uh, good job because it was a, a double coverage, so better to overthrow and not take the risk of another pick. Motion for Steinauer from right to left. Karstens steps up into the pocket, looks again to Bunk that gave us for a moment the impression of having beaten his man, uh, number 24, uh, Louis Triboulet. The ball was slightly Here's overthrown, down. but He's I think down. that uh, Bunk uh, kind of slowed down in the second half uh, of his pattern uh, because this looked uh, to be a very nice completion for Denmark. It was not the case. Third down and 10 coming up, uh, 56 uh, seconds to play in the third quarter of uh, this uh, one-sided uh, third place uh, game. Again, a pass, this time complete. Pasquet, the receiver. Eighteen yards on the completion. First and ten for Denmark. Francesco Pasquet refuses to give up to this game. End of this time uh, for David Espersen. Denmark still has all three timeouts, but has decided not to use them. A little more trouble with uh, the equipment for some Danish players. Second and ten, Tindermark. Again, uh, Karstens back to pass. Looks into the end zone. He has open uh, Victor Mazzanti for a moment. The ball perhaps should have been a little bit uh, with some more zip on it. Uh, it is instead a little bit uh, slow, the pass, and it allows the French secondary to come back towards the receiver. We remind you that we will have uh, uh, immediately at the end of this game interviews uh, and the MVP voting with uh, Manfredi Leone from the sideline. Third and ten for uh, Denmark. Karstens steps up into the pocket and this time finds Victor Mazzanti, wide receiver, 19 years of age, 1 meter 94 per 90 kilograms from the Triangle Razorbacks. And at least uh, as, a, as a small form of consolation, touchdown Denmark, 42 to 13 the score with Sondergaard uh, on the field to try the extra point. Uh, Manfredi, I think your uh, microphone is open. Yes, yeah, sorry, guys. Ah, okay. So, it, a nice one-hand catch. Unfortunately, the referees had blown the whistles uh, and had thrown some flags. Very nice uh, one-hand catch by Pasque. So, full start on the offense. The offense never said. 
Repeat. Try. A surprising two-point conversion by the Danish team, down by 31. Uh, at uh, sorry, down by 29 at this point. In fact, uh, uh, now France sets for uh, this pass in play. It is similar to the one before. It is a very nice lob pass from Alex Schwartz to Andreas Paske. Two points for Denmark and score. Then now reads 42 for France and 15 for Denmark. Three seconds to play. Let's watch the replay of this very nice pass. Also, nice catch from Mazzanti. Dario, you mentioned it uh, before. We were expecting uh, Denmark to exploit much more this uh, height advantage of the Danish receivers that are all extremely tall, 1 meter 90 and higher, uh, to, against uh, the shorter French secondary. And instead, it was the French secondary that responded with a wonderful game with multiple picks and basically sealed the game with interceptions every time that Denmark uh, showed uh, uh, basically uh, its presence in the French portion of the field. Francesco, if you want to exploit this kind of uh, mismatches and matchups, uh, you need uh, accuracy by your quarterbacks. And uh, this afternoon, uh, the quarterbacks uh, for the Team Denmark uh, has lacked a lot uh, about accuracy. I agree. Let's uh, now watch this uh, kickoff uh, from the Danish team uh, that should be the last play of this uh, third place game immediately after uh, the game. Once again, uh, we have our man uh, on the field, Manfredi Leone, ready to uh, tell us the MVPs uh, and obviously to have uh, uh, some words uh, with the player, the offensive and the defensive MVP from this game. Once yeah, again. Yeah, Francesco, first uh, we will have a little surprise. Sondergaard with a kick. Team France I, was really I don't think the ball traveled uh, the 10 yards because it was down on the 44. Uh, but uh, I don't see any signal from the refereeing crew. So, as you heard uh, from uh, Manfredi, we will have uh, a special uh, uh, celebration. At Illegal the touching. The ball didn't travel 10 yards. First and 10, Italy. I'm sorry, France. As soon as... Uh, as soon as the teams will line up uh, at uh, the 45, opposite 45 yard lines, a special award will be given to Coach Carlsen for the 50th time head coach of the Danish national teams. And also 25 years uh, he will celebrate as a head coach of the Danish national uh, team. So this is uh, what we will be seeing. Unfortunately, probably Coach Carlsen was hoping to celebrate uh, his 25 years as coach uh, and his 50 games also as head coach uh, in, a, in a much more uh, positive occasion. But Denmark is still the fourth team uh, to, to finish this Euro Championship. Claudio! Uh, final score, 42 This is the end of the game. For France. Dario, overall, uh, a very good performance on both sides of the ball from Team France that really deserved the win today. Both the offense and the defense of the French team, uh, I, I really liked uh, the, the level of play that they expressed in today's game. I agree, Francesco. Uh, two, both side, two sides of the ball, uh, very well managed, well coached, well, uh, uh, well executed. Uh, they have done everything uh, in the best way they could. Mm, no problems for, uh, for them to run uh, against this uh, Danish defense, no problem for them to stop the Danish offense. Everything has, uh, uh, has clicked in a perfect way for them and they deserved this bronze medal.
So, friends, uh, we are ready to give uh, something special to Coach uh, Lars Carlsen. Coach Carlsen, come here, please. Uh, Manfredi, can you please both hold uh, the microphones, you and Gianluca, so also the people in the stadium. Yeah, thank you. Please, Gianluca, cl come close to me because I have to... Yeah. Give me the, your mic. Yeah. Give me your mic. So for both the stadium and the TV, I am really honored with uh, Marie Solag. She will present these flowers and I will present this little box that you have to open because this is to celebrate your career with the 50 game as a head coach of national team in Denmark and 25 years a long career and we are very proud for you and uh, congratulations to achieve this outcome and uh, we know that you like Italy and we have already something so this machine is going for you to be something interesting I think when you are done you can show it to the general attendance so is a it's a coffee machine, so please show it. It's to celebrate your long career in football and the friendship with the football family. The Danish Federation as well is giving a plate for this celebration. Congratulations, coach. And we know you like wine, so... And even wine, so you have coffee. You need some cheese, probably, to complete the dinner. And this is not edible, you can just smell. Congratulations, please give us a big applause for this great guy who's serving football since a long time. Thank you, Coach Carlson. Thank you. Now we can go back to the MVP calling, please Gianluca Corti. Congratulations. So give us a few words, uh, comment your game today. Uh, I'm uh, very uh, happy for uh, this uh, game. C'était quoi la question? He is very happy for sure. Tu es très content. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm very happy uh, for uh, this uh, title and uh, I have a good game. Thank you very much. Please have your plates. So, Gianluca, let's go with the other. Congratulations, so it, it was a tough game and then you definitely took off. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, very hard, but, uh, but uh, the... Uh, L'objectif a été rempli, hein? L'objectif a été rempli. I... Uh, et voilà. Uh, the, the goal... The goal, uh, the goal is uh, accomplished, so it, uh, it's good for, uh, for us. Okay, thank you very much. You are really emotions uh, live from the stadium. So, thank you for being with us. Uh, you have the two MVP. Thank you very much, guys. Take a rest, take a shower. Congratulations. Now we will uh, follow with the coaches. Hopefully, I can have again Coach Maguet on my microphone. Please, Coach. Yeah. You said before uh, you're getting going, going to be a star. Now you, you have a, for sure the start and the third place. Yeah, one. So, coach, just uh, a few words uh, about the game you played. I mean, we had a good game, obviously, uh, winning the, 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 the bronze medal. I'm very proud of the kid. I love those kids. They were tremendous for two weeks. So that's their, their, their win. That's not our win. That's their win. They did a great job. It was a tough game, but at a certain point you took off. 
Yeah, we knew it was going to be a tough game, and we told the kid, I mean, at some point somebody's going to score point, and that might be the turning point. And we did, and we, we, we failed on the right side, so that's good for us. Congratulations again for the third place, coach. So I will have uh, probably Coach Larsen in one minute. I leave you the line for some comments, and I will be back to you soon. Thank you, Manfredi. We are going now to the uh, some team stats. 23 first downs for Denmark, 13 for France, but only 118 rushing yards for Denmark and 337 for France. 253 passing yards for Denmark, 25 only for uh, France, but 3 for 3 the French quarterback. Total yards almost the same, 371 Denmark, 362 France. In terms of penalties, 8 for 56 France, 11 for 89 Denmark. 22 minutes uh, for uh, France, 25 for Denmark, time of possessions. 2 for 5 France on third downs, 9 for 15 Denmark. Manfredi, back to you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Coach Lars, you have a lot of gift in your hands. Probably you're missing the gift, the biggest with the third place, but the game was tough. Indeed, France, they did well. Give us your comment. France is a really good team. We, we had to play a full game. We cannot play a, a half game, so take place off here and there. We have to play a full game every single down, and we wasn't able to do that. Uh, no doubt about it, all the gifts I get is appreciated. I would like to change it in for victory, but uh, it's appreciated. You have a long career on your back, and you are a good coach. Absolutely, you deserve this, uh, all these things. And uh, uh, your, what's uh, your thought about your experience in football? <laughs> I've been here 25 years, and uh, I have enjoyed every single minute I've been in this one. And I'm going to be here as long as possible. I'm, I'm enjoying life, I'm enjoying football. I will be here as long as possible. So even losing the game, you see in this face a smile and a, a, a guy who really likes to be in this community and, and work for this. Thank you very much, coach. Enjoy the rest of the night and we'll see we, we will win the final tournament. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. This is all for us. We will be back here at uh, 9 o'clock p.m. with uh, the other final. Uh, the live stream is going to be ready for 8.30 p.m. So it's going to be one hour stop. And that's it for Mom, for Manfredi from the field is all. Thank you. Thank you, Manfredi. Let's take a quick look to the individual leaders. At passing, Bird from France is 2 for 2 with 21 yards. On the other side, Schwartz leads the team Denmark with 17 on 27, 155 yards, one touchdown, but two interceptions. Receiving, Kita is the French leader with one for 14 yards. On the other side, Paske leads team Denmark with eight receptions, 74 yards. At rushing, Keita, 142 yards, at, and Pauline, 136 yards, very close between them. On the other side, Lilly is the leading rusher for Team Denmark with 11 carries and 39 net yards. On, the, on defense, for Team Denmark, Tawake is the lead, leading tackler with the five tackles. On the other side, Tribule is the leading tackler with 6.5 tackles, but the leader, leading defender is Pernier, the MVP, with 5.5 total takers, two interceptions, one defensive touchdown, and one kickoff return for another touchdown. So those were uh, your uh, individual statistics uh, from today's game. Once again, the final score is France 42, Denmark 15. So France ends this uh, Euro 2019 in third place, and Denmark in fourth. Uh, uh, as we remind you that at 9 o'clock we will have the kickoff uh, of the main entree of this very long Sunday football menu, the final between Austria and France. Also for Manfredi Leone and Dario Grippa, this is uh, Francesco Porcello saying uh, good afternoon to everyone uh, and see you in approximately uh, one hour on the frequencies of Feed of TV.
Ecco Elena che lotta per l'ambiente, per la biodiversità, per un sistema di produzione sostenibile che rispetti la terra e chi la lavora. Perché il mondo si cambia con le scelte di ogni giorno. Alce Nero, agricoltori biologici dal 1978. RDS insieme a te Voglia di Grandi eventi Diversi terreni Diverse condizioni e difficoltà Non ci fermano Una vera squadra È quella che si mette in gioco Quella dove si combatte Non ci si arrende Dove si suda Per farci trovare pronti alle sfide del futuro Quando cresci Lo fai con la squadra Fianco a fianco, insieme, insieme è perfetto. 